Have you ever tried to imagine 600,000 people? That's more than the population of Miami. The civil unrest in South Sudan has displaced 600,000 people. But that's not the total number. The civil unrest in South Sudan has displaced 600,000 children into Uganda alone. 600,000 children. Refugees who have fled to Uganda. Fleeing with whatever they can, they often arrive to refugee camps, having lost most of their belongings, their homes, and at times, their families. Uganda does a lot to help these children, providing them with accommodation and support. Part of this includes placement into schools. But to go to school in Uganda, you need to speak English, which many South Sudanese children do not know. The current solution to this is to place children in school grades much lower than their age. And as you can well imagine, it's humiliating to be in a class with students four years younger than you. This leads to bullying, and often the refugees drop out. 56% of Uganda's South Sudanese refugee children population do not currently attend school. My team and I found this situation unacceptable and committed ourselves to using our technical knowledge combined with researched educational practices to help these students learn English quickly and unlock their potential. I want to get you thinking of other ways in which technology can be used to reinvent education. As I share our work, I urge you to ask yourself, how can you help? What expertise do you possess and how can we collaborate to change the lives of these students and others? So let me tell you about our work. We're designing an entirely new English learning program that utilizes technology that we all have in our pockets, a mobile phone. Picture a school in a developing nation like Uganda. You're probably thinking of a classroom full of tables at which students sit watching a teacher lecture at a blackboard. Stereotypical views of education continue to force this ancient schooling system upon many communities. And in the 21st century, many still think this is the best educational model to promote. What if we could use a totally new approach to teach these children English? Advances in technology provide us with many new tools to accelerate the English learning process, and research institutions around the world have collected and analyzed data on the most effective methods of teaching for decades. What are these techniques, and why aren't we using them in Uganda right now? Why perpetuate outdated methods of education when we know better? I want to introduce you to Helen, my friend, colleague, and mentor. I met Helen earlier this year when I found myself in Uganda teaching a STEM workshop to school children in Soroti, a city to the north of Uganda. Helen works for the NGO 2D Uganda, which she established with her sister Betty. One afternoon, sitting under a tree in 2D's compounds, Helen showed us the schoolwork of a student she was tutoring. The student was a South Sudanese refugee girl who had been bullied in school due to her lack of English skills. Helen was teaching the girl English in the hopes that she would be able to re-enter school to complete her studies. Tutoring this girl in English took a lot of time on top of running 2D. Multiple studies have shown minimum times of one year for students to progress from zero to conversational English skills even on the most accelerated English learning programs. Unfortunately, we don't have 300,000 Helens. If we did, Uganda's child refugee population would all be in school. We began thinking, how can we bring the intimate one-on-one -on -one teaching that Helen was providing to this child to the entire refugee population? Being MIT students, we of course wondered how to apply technology to this problem. We first thought, what if we could design and distribute low-cost computers, each containing learning courses downloaded to the device, free to use at any time? We explored this for some time, then discovered another project that distributed hundreds of thousands of laptops, only to learn that establishing a repair system for broken laptops was not viable. They assumed that computers would be used as intended, overlooking how the role of children and girls in the household was viewed in many communities. This stumped us for a while. But then we realized, what device does almost every person in the world have access to? A smartphone. 
What do you use your phone for? I'm guessing you spend a significant portion of time on social media, maybe in an amount of time you're embarrassed to admit. And you're not alone. Often, I find myself reaching for my phone, swiping to the same app, and mindlessly scrolling before returning back to work. This is true across the world, and it's true in Uganda. I've taught students in classrooms around the globe, and the mobile phone is the common denominator of distraction. What if we could leverage this social media habit to teach English to South Sudanese refugee children? It sounds kind of crazy, but stay with me. As social media slowly steals more and more of our attention, I think it's time to pivot and design technologies centered around it. We need to leverage existing social media technologies and tweak them to support learning. Of course, social media alone is not the solution. Imagine the chaos, teaching students with unlimited access to social media at any time. That's why social media learning is only a part of a three-stage English learning plan that we are developing for South Sudanese refugee children. First, through modern English learning curriculums that draw from educational research, students will begin the program in the classroom. But this classroom is unlike any you've probably seen before. Equipped with speech-to-text smartphones, interactive tools, and multiple teachers, our classrooms will allow the students to learn the basics of the English language, obtaining proficiency and basic conversational skills. Second, is the social media aspect of the course. A platform built specifically for English learning, where students will interact with pre-written social media posts before advancing to talking online with classmates, where students can practice conversational English. In an ever-growing online world, we also need to promote safe internet practices. So we're teaching students how to be safe when interacting with others online. Finally, in stage three, Students re-enter school at the correct grade with the vital English skills necessary to succeed. Additional supplementary classes will be available to students who require them to integrate into the school community. Students will be placed in schools with fellow program participants, ensuring they don't feel alone and isolated. Using social media is the key to our approach. But think of how many ways technology can be applied to education in non-traditional ways. What about augmented and virtual reality, the internet of things, quantum computing, just to name a few? Imagine what can be achieved in a classroom if we were to lean into the technological advances of the past 30 years. The classroom would never be the same again. In Uganda, there is no longer a need to provide outdated education. With the increasing affordability of technology, we can bring world-leading education to these students. South Sudanese refugee children arriving in Uganda will be welcomed by opportunity. Providing English learning not only allows them to enter the school system, but sets them up for success, whether they remain in Uganda or return to South Sudan. Education quality should not be dependent on where you call home, and it no longer needs to be. It's time for change. In Uganda, the goal is English learning. But elsewhere, Yemeni, Venezuelan, and Syrian children, to name a few, lack access to any education at all in the countries where they take refuge. Let's get back to the drawing board, innovating how technology is used in the classroom. We need help scaling this approach. And if you have the capacity to do so, connect with others and start reimagining education that utilizes modern technologies in any way you see possible. This is going to be an iterative process. Not everything will work. Don't view education as a product that we need to supply. View it as an opportunity, one in which we can bring education that utilizes cutting edge technology to students across the world. What ideas do you have? My work focuses on South Sudanese refugee children, but the problem is much larger. And so is the opportunity that comes with it. All across the world, vulnerable populations, whether in developing or developed nations, lack access to vital educational resources. Even within the US, rural and urban children face similar issues. We must use technology to address this urgent need. Not only is this need apparent for children, but adults too. Many adult immigrants and refugees could benefit greatly from access to language lessons. 
Let's start by reimagining education for those who need it most and go from there. If we can create change in Uganda, imagine the impacts that can be had elsewhere. Thank you.